A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Jesus said, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Yeshua Jesus gives us a really, really clear step-by-step instruction manual. This is one of, to me, this is one of the most like black and white, clear parts of the gospel to understand. There's nothing symbolic here. There's no allegory. There's no deeper meaning. He just wants us to do this. Simple as that. If somebody sins against you, if your brother sins against you, step one, go talk to him, just you and them. What if my brother didn't sin against me? What if it wasn't my brother? What if it was somebody... I don't know, and they did something bad. What if it was somebody on the news? What if it was a celebrity or a politician? I'm not lying, I'm just talking about what they did. What if I want to talk about something that somebody did that I don't know? That's called gossip. That is what the sin of gossip is. It's not lying, lying is a different sin. Gossip means you're getting yourself involved involved in other people's business. And I know, I, I get like the, the reality we live in, you can't really turn on the news without hearing gossip. Okay, part, some of the news is relevant to us and we need to know what's going on in the world and so on. And a lot of it, once it gets to like the celebrity divorces, I'm sorry, that's gossip. That's not nobody's business. And now you're gonna hear it and you're gonna care about it for some reason as if it has anything to do with you. And you're gonna go talk, oh, did you hear so-and-so, these celebrities that we've never met and will never meet They've never heard of us, they don't care about us at all, but we care about them for some reason, and we're gonna talk about it for an hour. You know why that's a sin? You're wasting your time on this earth that's so limited, on something so dumb. So Jesus says, if your brother sins against you, now it's your business. And now you go talk to him one-on-one. You don't get your sister involved, you don't ask for advice, you don't vent. You got a problem, somebody somebody bothered you, maybe give it some time, let it cool down, make sure you're understanding things the way they are, and then you go and talk, one-on-one. And you talk with the intention of gaining your brother. You have that conversation so that your the person that sinned against you can understand what they did and be sorry for it and, and repent of their sin. You don't go talk to them because you're mad and you want them to know that you're mad. You don't do that. You act like a Christian and okay, you know what? If it's if it's just about anger and there's not really any reason to even bring this up, then you turn the other cheek and you move on with your life and don't think about it again. But if it's worth talking about, it's worth talking about calmly so that the person can repent of their sin. If that's not your intention, keep your mouth shut until you're calm enough for that to be your intention. Because if that's not in your mind, your love for them isn't isn't there. And if you're not gonna speak out of love, you're gonna make things worse. And also don't be passive aggressive, and I'm not gonna say anything, and then you're gonna wash the dishes really loud so that they know you're mad. That makes things worse too. You all know what I'm talking about. Go and talk, you and him alone. It's not worth having the conversation. Okay, fine. It's not worth having the conversation, then it's not worth being mad about. Then grow up and move on. It's worth it. Okay, I'm gonna go and talk to him. Then, oh he doesn't he didn't listen to me, he didn't, he didn't okay. 
Then Jesus says, step two, bring a couple of witnesses. People that saw it, that know what's going on. And the whole group, it's confrontational. I get it. And it's hard to do that. And it's uncomfortable. But it's worth it if, if it was that big of a deal. And all of you go and you speak with such kindness and humility that you make it easy for that person to admit that they were wrong. If you go in, I can't wait to make you so ashamed of what you did. If they're going to get defensive. You're not going to win any souls that way. You go and you, make, you say, you know what, I've done the same thing and I was so sorry when I did that. And you know what, I did that to you one time and I want you to know that it was... And you make it so easy and pleasant for them to repent. Then you've won your brother. Again, if that's not your intention, don't bring it up. Let it go, move on with your life. Then, step three, if that doesn't work, then you bring it to the church. Don't bring it to the church right away. I do not care if you got into an argument with somebody. It's not my business. You go talk to them. And if it's worth it to bring other people and get other people involved, great. I do recommend those people. It's not a good idea for them to be relatives because they're going to take sides and it's going to get made worse. Try to bring objective people, cool-headed people to come into them. Then if it gets to that, okay, then get the church involved. And then he says, if the church, if they won't even listen to the church, then they should be to you as a tax collector or a pagan. Meaning, you pray for them, you pray for them to repent of their sins, but you don't really interact with them as much as you used to. You take a step back. If it's that important. And I think what Jesus wants us to understand is, by the end of it, like, oh man, you want me to stop talking to him? No, it wasn't that big a deal. 99% of the time, it isn't that big a deal. He wants us to get to the end of this and read it. Wait, you want me to treat him like a pagan? No, all he did was whatever. And Jesus wants us to say all he did was whatever, and then to realize, yeah, you know what? I shouldn't even be mad about this. Who cares? As if I'm perfect and I never make mistakes. Move on, let it go. This is the way Jesus understands these interactions that we have with other people. Uh, and I'm giving the advice to myself because I'm not good at this either, but I think this is something that Jesus wants us to actually literally put into our lives, put into put into into action so that peace and love can, can really dwell among us. And if there's peace and love between us, then there could be peace and love between us and God as well.